Hello everybody. Welcome to Landmark Beta and Q Hammer. This is going to be a quick crash course guide in all the advanced building techniques. I wanted to put them all in one place so you guys can be able to watch them quick and easily and get your hands on the tools um, and start experimenting with them. Because there's really no amount of guides that's going to show you um, what you can learn by just using the tools. Um, it's really easy to get them all set up and use them. Um, we're going to cover three of the most popular ones right now. And the simplest ones to use is um, microvoxeling, antivoxel etching, and zero data voxeling. So we'll get started with microvoxeling. That's kind of the foundation, one and one of the first ones people discovered. So uh, what you're going to do is place a single block with your place tool and uh, just floating in the air. And then you're going to grab it with your select tool and just smooth it down. Uh, the new smooth tool is not very precise. The old one in alpha, you could do several different adjustments, but as you can see here, just with three smooths, you almost have like a grain of sand or rice by the time you get there. So you don't have a lot of size to work with right now, but that doesn't limit you too much. There still is some amazing stuff you can do. So after you smooth it down um, using your select tool and highlighting it, then you just smooth it down like I did there um, and that's the first size I got so I smooth it down each time one two and three I kind of call it like a large medium and a small micro box so this one this little design here it looks crazy but um, it really was just me placing blocks you know diagonal to each other to create these crazy angles and then directly next to each other to create the uh, right angle and straight lines so um, you play around with it a little bit uh, see what you think about it. I, it, it's best to work flat. I like to work flat first because you raise it up off the ground and it remembers the height. So you're working on the same plane. So whatever you're building, you can see when you make an angle. Um, it creates this. It creates a little angle when you go around a corner if you place things directly to the side. But if you want to correct that, um, you just re-click that corner and it'll fix itself. So you can fix the little uh, odd errors like that and make exactly straight lines. And um, again, working flat is the best way if you're going to make um, designs and layers like this, which you can then flip up you know, and put in any direction, paste it, and it, you can also smooth it again. And you see when I smoothed it again, it actually made those corners here sharper. So there's tons of things you can do by just re-smoothing things after you've microvoxeled and really it's all experimentation see what you can do with it uh, one of the most common applications I've seen out there actually is window frames since there's no glass or anything really you can create the effect of windows by just using these micro boxes to create the effect of window panes so you can do little windows you can keep the angles in if you like that or you can clean cut it no angles at all uh, I think it's kind of cool to have a few angles in there or create some uh, different styles of windows uh, you can really experiment. There's crazy things you can do. Uh, this little contraption here, I was just messing around um, with this little super thin, small micro voxel square. I just, you know, built it up in a square, and then I started pasting it around to see what crazy things I could do with it. And um, pasting it on top of each other and stacking creates these type of like shoot-like designs, super thin. And then if you paste it next to each other, um, it'll actually create these sheets. So it's really fun. Uh, you can experiment with it. When you place it next, like one square next to it, but not fully touching, it can create these slanted angles. And the same effects are there. The right angles, you can get rid of those by repasting a microvoxel right in the corner. So that's microvoxeling in a nutshell. Experiment with it. See what you think about it. Um, I'm going to go right into antivoxel etching next because um, it uses some of the similar things when you're actually, once you start etching. But to set up your tool, you basically build your tool first. Um, the quickest way to do it, uh, you do a 5 by 5 by one uh, little sheet there, and then you delete the center one, and then you copy that 5 by 5 and you copy and paste it twice on the front and the back to get a 5 by 5 by 5 where you should be able to see straight through the center. And then you're going to grab that five by five unit and smooth it down to whatever desired thickness you want. Um, it really depends. What you want to do though is if you look 
to this one over here, you can see right through it, this little pinhole. Kind of whatever shape you leave there is what you're going to be etching into it when you pull the center slice. So I'll s smooth it a couple times. I think is what I did this just twice. And you get, when you pull the center slice out, um, you just get your 5 by 5 slice here. And you just copy that, paste it here. This is what you'll get. And you'll see this tiny little pinhole, and that's an anti voxel. It looks like, see how the select tool won't even hover over it right now? Because it's not an actual voxel, even though there's stuff filling that space. So that's your basically the tool that you're going to be carving or the shape you're carving into your wall. And to do that, you're actually going to need a handle of something visible you can see because this is air. So what you're going to do is create a handle by placing a block directly in front of with a, with a little air gap and use the tweak tool. I mean, it's amazing. You, it makes everything so much quicker. You can get stuff exactly where you want it, which for this particular instance, you're going to want it one block away and directly in front of your little um, thing. Check and see if you got the right spot. And that's your handle. You're going to use that to carve. So after you get your handle, you'll want to grab three voxels. The handle, the air space between, and your empty anti-voxel that's going to start etching into your surface. So you copy that, bring it over to your face or your wall or whatever you want to etch in, and then you just use the yellow block as an indicator and you start carving away. Uh, an important thing to remember is that it's only going to face one way. You can rotate it, um, just so you got to remember <laughs> which way your uh, your air box is going to be, your anti box is going to be facing. So it can be kind of tricky. Um, you'll have to experiment with it and pay attention, but um, here so far I've gone down a line and I'm carving into the wall. I'll have to remove these blocks in front so you can see. But what I'm going to do on this last corner here when I get to the bottom, I'm going to go out and then I'm going to replace this bottom corner. And you'll see why in a second. I'm going to go ahead now and pull these blocks, the handles off, and delete them so you can see what's behind. So this is where I was carving into the wall, kind of like a snake in a line. And you see these angles it leaves behind just like micro voxeling. Um, when I got to the end here, by replacing that corner, it got rid of that angle. So you can experiment with that and see what you want to do with that. It's cool to leave it in sometimes. It's cool to take it out. Uh, it just depends on what you want to carve into things. And when you copy and paste these things, um, remember that... Let me get a better grab there. Um, sometimes it doesn't like to actually grab the face, but you copy these and when you paste them, it's not going to paste the border outside. It's only actually going to paste this center piece when you paste it. So if I click it there, you see there's no border. Even though there's a border in my selection, it's not here. It's only grabbing the center. I'm not sure why that is. Probably because there we've carved air there, so there's nothing there. Um, and on the outside, um, I even tried building around the outside to see if it would bring it back, and it didn't. So you really just got to experiment and see for yourself what you want to do with it. I think there's tons of applications for it, but um, definitely just as useful as microboxing, if not more. And the other one that I haven't found as many applications for, but is still extremely useful, is zero data. So basically the game, how zero data works is the game remembers blocks you've placed, including air. So if I wanted to create this sort of chain link design conventionally, when I paste the first one, it'd be fine. When I go to place the second one interlocking, it would cut off this center top of the chain because I would have air in my traditional design. But if you heal the ground somewhere and use it as a building platform, you basically carve out your form in procedurally generated terrain. This dirt is, I didn't place it, it's procedurally generated, I healed it. I carved into it, placed my voxels, and now when I copy all of this even though I'm copying everything around this, this is two by two deep, by the way. Um, when I'm copying it, all that dirt and everything around, when I go to actually paste it, it's not going to paste the procedurally generated terrain because there's no data there. It's just procedurally generated world. So when you paste it, bam, it only places what you've carved out and placed in there manually. 
this is super handy when you go to start interlinking things. If I can get this in the right spot, again, use the tweak tool. I don't know, I'm messing around with the basic ones. Tweaking is so much easier. And you can see when you interlock, uh, I kind of overlap there, but when you interlock things, it goes right through them. So it doesn't delete any of the previous one, um, except where I've recorded boxes. So I use that effect to create the chain, and then I just highlighted it all and smoothed it one time to make it look more round, like a real chain. And you could even round the corners off in your ground design, so when it's smoothed, it'd be round or chain links. But um, that's the application that I saw it was pretty obvious for it. But there's tons of other ones. Like if you're going to do a sculpture, uh, you can add on to it by using stuff built in zero data terrain, just to add on to it without messing up your current sculpture you'll just add on whatever you wanted to add on. So it's pretty cool. Um, experiment with it a lot. You can kind of combine a lot of these techniques together to create some really cool stuff. I haven't experimented tons with it, but what I have so far has been fun. So anyways, that's your quick crash course. I'm not going to spend any more time to make this any longer, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Take care and uh, come back to EQ Hammer for more guides and tutorials. Thanks.